order. Chair would entertain a motion for the consideration of claims. I would move for the consideration of claims to be paid in the amount of $982,212.24, along credit card in the amount of $4,174.14, manual checks in the amount of $325.26, payroll, payroll and liabilities for October 3rd, 2014 in the amount of $218,308.36, for a total of one million two hundred thousand five hundred and twenty dollars and sixty cents. Second. All right. Is there any uh, questions about the bills? Uh, one question. We have the. What was the additional? <clears throat> what was the additional the uh, that we have here between uh, twenty six dollars on the back end and five hundred and twenty? What was that? Just the, the amended amount. In the credit cards that we just received. Yeah, yeah that was that. Yeah, just there. there. Added okay. The volunteers made Okay. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> any other questions? I did not have any. And I did not have any questions either. So, all those in favor of the approval of claims, say aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carried. Do we have any other business today, Mr. Weaver? want to talk about uh, did we decide on uh, we've got three people here for uh, the meeting on the uh, 4th of November or 5th of November we decided would we get a time a start time on that so we're gonna do it on at 7 o'clock on Monday third November 3rd. So you're going to put out a... Okay. Very excited. <laughs> as, as you all know, I am a adamant statistician, so... I'll be compiling my own numbers to go along with the ones coming. <laughs> <laughs> All right, if there's no other business, meeting adjourned. In council to order at 7 p.m. Uh, would Council Member Larson lead us in the pledge, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Would the city clerk please conduct the roll call? Yes, Your Honor. Acting Councilman. here, but we've got the real thing. <laughs> okay. Councilman Rich Gard. Here. Councilman Martin Canan. Here. Councilwoman Mary Ellen Christensen. Present. Councilman Jonathan Fabian. Here. Councilman Kyle Larson. Here. Councilman Todd Smith. Here. Mayor Ron Warpness. I'm present. Welcome back. Glad to have you. Okay, I declare that we have a quorum this evening. Um, the chair would entertain a motion for the approval of the agenda. Motion to approve the agenda. Second. second. Been moved and seconded. Is there a discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Communication from the floor, citizens' comments. <coughs> Anyone in the audience wishing to address the council regarding an item that is already on the agenda will be given an opportunity to speak later on. I would ask those individuals who wish to address the council at this time to approach the podium and identify yourself for the record. Is there anyone in the audience wanting to address the council at this time? Okay, apparently not. Um, agenda item number seven, city staff response to previous citizens comments, if any. Do we have any? Okay. Um, Consent agenda. Uh, would the acting city clerk, would the city clerk please conduct or read the consent agenda items by title only? Yes, Your Honor. <clears throat> approval of the minutes October 7th, 2014 regular council meeting. Approval of the minutes October 14th, 2014 council work session. Approval of the minutes October 20th, 2014 finance committee meeting. Approval of finance committee recommendations for October 20th, 2014. 
The catering permit from Miss Jenny's Roost, November 14, 2014, for the Wyoming Association of Contractors dinner at Reach at 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. And ordinance number 14 008, second reading, second, uh, Century Link franchise agreement. And, Your Honor, may I read that title at this time pursuant to statutory requirements? Okay. <coughs> This is ordinance number 14-008 on second reading, an ordinance granting a franchise to Quest Corporation DBA CenturyLink QC on behalf of itself and its operating affiliates CenturyLink to operate and maintain a telecommunications system, the system in the city of Riverton, Wyoming, the city. Your Honor. Thank you. Yes. It's the recommendation of the Finance Committee for the approval of claims to be paid in the amount of $982,212.24. Checks written for payroll liabilities for October 3rd, 2014 in the amount of $218,308.36. Manual checks in the amount of $325.26. Elan credit card in the amount of $4,174.14 for a total of $1,200,520.60. Thank you. The Chair would entertain a motion regarding the consent agenda. I move for approval of the consent agenda at this time. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Same sign. Motion carries. Okay, agenda <coughs> item number nine is the mayor's proclamation for premature birth awareness. <coughs> I've been asked to read this proclamation this evening. Uh, <coughs> whereas premature birth those babies born before 37 weeks is the leading cause of newborn deaths, and whereas among babies who survive, preterm birth can be the cause of lifelong health problems such as higher rates of learning disability, cerebral palsy, sensory deficits, and respiratory illnesses. And whereas in Wyoming, one in nine babies, 11.5% of live births, was born preterm in 2013, with an increase in each of the past three years. Whereas prematurity takes an enormous toll on families and costs uh, society billions of dollars, whereas to reduce the incidence of premature birth and consequences of infants, deaths, and birth de defects in Wyoming, preventative strategies should involve identifying and strengthening existing comprehensive evidence-based approaches while also implementing new promising approaches to prevention. And whereas organizations such as the March of Dimes, uh, the coordinator of the National Prematurity Awareness Campaign work to raise public awareness of the problems caused by premature births and to decrease the rate of preterm births in Wyoming. Now, therefore, I, Ronald O'Warpness, Mayor of the City of Riverton, <coughs> Wyoming, do hereby proclaim uh, November 1 through 30, 2014, to be Prematurity Awareness Month. And I encourage all community members to become more knowledgeable about prematurity and join with the March of Dimes to fight it. In witness where, hereof, I have hereunto set my hand and caused the official seal of the city of Riverton to be affixed this 21st day of 2014. Agenda item number 10, appointment of new planning commission member, Kenneth Hansen, alternate. Community Development Director's report, please. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, the City of Riverton is assisted by citizens' advisory boards in formulating policy and procedures, and the boards for the Community Development Department include the Planning Commission and the Construction Board of Appeals. Uh, we did uh, enact terms for these boards uh, recently. At the beginning of 2014, uh, one of our Planning Commission board members' terms ended, and he decided that his job interfered with his ability to serve on the board for another term, so this <coughs> left a vacancy for an alternate member on the Planning Commission. With these uh, staggered uh, terms as established, the vacant position is a three-year term beginning in 2014. Uh, we did place an ad uh, again this year requesting interested citizens to consider serving on our board. Uh, the mayor received a letter from Kenneth Hansen, who expressed interest in serving on the Planning Commission board. 
Mr. Hansen was introduced to the Planning Commission members and gave a little of his background. And he is very much interested in serving on the board. He comes with a master's degree in urban and regional planning uh, from the University of Colorado, which we feel would be very helpful on our board. Um, staff and board members recommend uh, that the mayor, with the concurrence of the city council, appoint Kenneth Hansen to the planning commission as an alternate member for the balance of the three-year term that began in a 20, uh, the beginning of 2014. Thank you very much. Uh, the chair would entertain a motion regarding this appointment. I would move to um, appoint Ken Hansen to the Planning Commission. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to appoint Kenneth Hansen as an alternate to the Planning Commission. Um, is there discussion? Okay. Uh, uh, all those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. <clears throat> motion carries. Mayor votes aye. Welcome aboard, Kenneth. Thank you very much, Your Honor. We appreciate your willingness to serve and are looking forward to taking advantage of your experience and background. Thank you. I'm excited. Okay. okay, agenda item number 11 is public hearing and consideration of new daycare license application for Tiffany Crandall, Tater Tot Daycare. Community Development Director's report, please. Tater tot, huh? <laughs> okay. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, in accordance with our Title 5.08 of the Riverton Municipal Code, uh, the following has been conducted. A uh, properly completed application with a $65 fee paid, publication requirement for the notice of public hearing, notification of property owners within 140 feet, and verification of application with the State of Wyoming. The facility was also inspected for code compliance conducted by the city's building inspector. The application is for a family child care home with no more than 10 children, including the applicant's children. 16 notifications were delivered to surrounding property owners regarding the proposed daycare facility located at 1517 Marianne Drive. All signed their approval for this daycare. You do have alternatives at this point in time, but it is staff's recommendation that you approve the new daycare license application submitted by Tiffany Crandall for a family daycare home at 1517 Marianne Drive. Okay, thank you, Sandy. The chair would entertain a motion regarding this new daycare license application. Oh, I'm sorry. Ah, public hearing. Okay, uh, the chair would entertain a motion to open the public hearing. Your Honor, I'd make a motion to open public hearing. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Okay. Um, we are in public hearing at this time. Is that? Is there anyone that would care to speak on this issue this evening? Seeing none, Your Honor, I'd make a motion to close. Okay. Second. It's been moved and seconded to close the public hearing. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign, motion carries. Okay, and now we will entertain a motion regarding the consideration of the new daycare license application for Tiffany Crandall. Your Honor, I'd move to approve the uh, new daycare license <coughs> for Tiffany Crandall. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Is there a discussion regarding this uh, um, application? Okay. Uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Same sign. Motion carries. Mayor votes aye. Congratulations. Yeah. I wish to all of our past daycare licenses that went down so smoothly. Uh, all right. Agenda item number 12, Lapeer Liquor License uh, Dispensing Change Request. City Clerk, Administrative Services Director Report. Yes, Your Honor. This is just really a mere technicality. Uh, Susan Skidmore is here tonight in case you have any questions, and she probably knows the liquor law better than the liquor division. But anyway, what, what essentially happened is on her business license, it states that her dispensing room is upstairs, a 30 by 17 room on the east side. She did what she knew she had to do. She moved it downstairs because they have children in the upstairs now. They're only using the liquor for the catering business for the Lapeer while the trailhead is in. You'll be seeing another letter in 2015 after their remodel. 
and they'll move it back upstairs. But uh, so everything is in order. We just need approval by the by the governing body to change to approve her changing the dispensing room area. Okay. Chair would entertain a motion regarding this dispensing room change request. Your Honor, I'd make the motion to approve the Lapeer liquor dis distribution room as requested. Second. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign, motion carries. Okay, agenda item number 13, resolution number 1305, establishing a 45 gallon sanitation billing rate. Public Work Director report, please. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, as you follow your staff report, um, you see that currently the City of Riverton has uh, the following billing rates associated with its residential sanitation services. They have a regular service alley dumpster at 3386, a regular service rollout uh, for 90 gallon rollouts at 3227. A uh, regular service rollout, that's again the 90 gallon with verified recycling at a discounted rate of 2672. And lastly, we currently have a economy service rollout, which is the 45 gallon rollout with verified recycling at the discounted rate of 2381. As you can see, the, the above listed rate structure does not provide an option for residents who currently use the 45 gallon rollout and do not recycle. Those using the 45 gallon receptacle without verified recycling are currently being charged the regular service rollout rate of 3227. Since these residents are producing less trash by using a 45 gallon receptacle than the 90 gallon receptacle, staff from both the Public Works Department and Administrative Services Department um, feels that an appropriate <coughs> rate should be created to discount the use of the smaller receptacle. The rate difference between the 90 gallon regular service rollout and the verified recycling 90 gallon rollout is $5.55. This represents a 20.77% increase from the recycle rate of 26.72 to the non-recycle rate of 32.27. When we looked at establishing a fair and equitable rate for the 45 non-recycle account, uh, we followed the same logic as the 90 gallon recycle versus 90 gallon non-recycle. As it stands, there is currently a 45 gallon recycle rate. Therefore, to create the non-recycle rate, it stands to reason that we would use the same percentage increase for the 45 as we have had with the 90 gallon recycle rate. That being said, um, if we use that 20.77% increase to the existing 45 gallon economy um, service rate with verified recycling, um, this would produce a $4.95 excuse me, a $4.95 increase from the existing base rate of 2381, therefore creating a new rate Twenty-eight seventy-six for the 45 economy service without verified recycling. As we've, curr or as we've stated um, <coughs> several times in these meetings, the city currently has a surplus of approximately 545 gallon rollout receptacles that are ready to be put into service. It is expected that a percentage of this surplus will be used as the city transitions away from residential alley, alley dumpsters to rollout receptacles. Currently, 13% of the city's total, out, total rollouts excuse me, um, are 45-gallon receptacles. So currently, <coughs> residents using the rollouts, uh, there's a combination, obviously, of 90 and 45 gallons. 13% uh, of, of that total amount are the 45-gallon rollouts. Creating a non-recycle rate will accomplish two general purposes. First, it will fairly charge users who prefer a 45-gallon receptacle but do not recycle. Second, it will, assist, it will assist staff to market more of the surplus 45-gallon uh, receptacles into service as the city transitions from alley dumpsters to rollouts. As such, staff recommends the city council approves the rate resolution uh, 1305, establishing a sanitation billing rate 
of $28.76 for residential economy service, which is the 45 gallon rollout. To talk about budget impacts, uh, since the current non recycle 45 gallon residents pay the regular service rate of $32.27, creating a new rate of $28.76 will, by effect, bring in less revenue to the sanitation fund. However, it should be noted that it, um, well, I think it's important to note that the impact that the 45-gallon receptacle makes um, or has on the city's trash collection and subsequent, and subsequent tipping fees is less than the 90-gallon receptacle. Therefore, we feel it is fair to uh, create a rate um, that is equitable to the amount of effect they have on our sanitation services um, below the 90 gallon receptacle. Thank you. Thank you uh, very much. Uh, well. <clears throat> okay, the chair would entertain a motion regarding resolution number 1305 establishing a 45 gallon sanitation billing rate. Your Honor, I would move to accept resolution number 1305 on uh, first reading. Second. Yes. <clears throat> Your Honor, uh, this is resolution number 13 or 1305, a resolution providing an additional sanitation billing rate for the residential economy service 45 gallon rollout without recycling pursuant to the collection and disposal of garbage, rubbish, and debris. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And we have a motion and a second on that. Is there discussion regarding this issue at this time? Your Honor? Yes. Was any time? Maybe. Was any time taking a look at the uh, all of the rates and basically make sure that we're covering the cost of doing business and and just if we're doing the resolution anyway, it seems like we might want to take a look at the whole thing instead of one piece. That and the problem is we don't know some of the effects of how many people are going to actually sign up for the service. Uh, we think we're going to be all right, but we're going to carefully monitor that just because when they initially bought all the 45 gallons, we thought a bunch of people were going to use those, and we and they didn't. We still have 500 left. And so it, it was – we had discussions about the fact of how that's going to affect the sanitation fund, but uh, we don't – we won't really know until it actually goes into effect. Thank you. Any other comments? Um, I was not an enthusiastic supporter of the community going this direction, as we all know. Um, and with this information, I got out my calculator and did a little um, uh, playing with it. And with the uh, regular dumpster, alley dumpsters right now, uh, folks are paying $33.86 a piece, is my understanding. And so if I were to change to a 45-gallon recycling, I'd be paying $23.81. So that's a $10.05 loss in revenue to the city. And so if you have four citizens that are sharing this dumpster, then that's $40 per dumpster that we'll be losing uh, in revenue. Um, the other side of it is, um, each dumpster, each three-yard dumpster, um, has a volume capacity of 605 gallons. Okay, that's 13 and a half 45-gallon rollouts that I, as a citizen, have that capacity to put in the dumpster that I'm receiving now. Um, or for each of the four people that share that dumpster, that's 151 gallons. Okay, so I'm trading 151 gallons for a 45-gallon dumpster. Uh, it's costing me $10 less money. So, um, but and then I figured out what it is the cost per gallon in terms of a charge, and that 151 gallon is 22 cents a gallon. Where with the 45-gallon uh, uh, with recycling, it's something like 53 cents a gallon. So it's, it's a huge difference that we're making, um, you know, economically. Um, and, but we're not going to go back and re-ring that bell. I understand that. That uh, horse is out of the barn, so. Um, Your 
Honor? Yes. Are we complaining about that it's not enough or too much? I'm not. I'm just making an observation. Well, I know it, but we're 150 gallons versus 45 and 50 cents versus 23. Mm -hmm. Either way, the dumpster was a smash deal right. to the Citizens. the occupant of the or the owner of it. Mm -hmm. So based on that, are we really have we really reviewed our garbage rates appropriately? Your Honor. Yes. Councilman Gard. Quicker math the quicker math is about hundred and eight dollars a year per household <clears throat> when you switch to a to a rollout. And so the reduction um, will be substantial and in you know, we'll have to monitor that, just like the city said. We won't. We really won't, can't read the tea leaves until until the cup's empty. And so, at the end of the year, we'll have to take a look at that, and we may have to adjust that sanitation fee. But it is about $108 a year over the long run between a 95 degree, 95 gallon container, and and the 45s. And so. I think the one thing that the city's trying to point out here is we have a surplus of 500, we have 500 surplus 45 gallon containers. And the real problem that existed was even if you were practical and said I only needed a 45 gallon container, you were still paying the full amount at 90, uh, 95 for the 95 gallon container. So I think this is really fair and equitable. It's the same formula that came to to govern the, the current rollouts. And so I think the math is correct. I think the, the problem that we have to look at is that very, very possibly that the sanitation uh, department will be a little bit short because of the reduction from dumpster revenue. But with that said, we were sold that, that on the fact that we we're going to pick up um, less days and and all sorts of things so i would i would suggest that we pass this as it, the way it sits now and and see what the deficit is i i think all three of us that have spoken have voted against the removal of those dumpsters but that's not what we're talking about we're actually talking about how to get those 45 gallon dumpsters out and use and i would suggest that many you know i had this conversation with my wife and said uh, Let's go to a 45 degree or 45 gallon container, and she said, "You're an idiot." And I said, "Well, you know that's <laughs> that's uh, already been proven on a number of occasions." And uh, she said, "What do we do when the kids come home?" And I think that's the real problem. That you know, typically she and I could get by with the smaller container, and and we have to have that thought process of vacations, Christmas, um, Thanksgiving. And, and then I think that takes us right back to the same question, is we can only take that spare garbage to the dump on, from 9 to, from 8 to 5. And so I think it really is a, is a question that's chasing itself. But I think this, um, this uh, resolution that we're talking about is a, is a thoughtful one, and it brings it back into at least the same rate for every container, so you can make the choice. Uh, if, and I think that will help get the 45 gallon containers out into use. Thank you, Your Honor. And I do agree with that, uh, Councilman Guard, that, that this resolution uh, is uh, talking about just the 45 gallon containers and, and uh, just, uh, you know, correcting that um, hole in our billing structure that needed to be filled. And I think the math is all correct, and I have absolutely no problem at all with that. Um, and I was just, uh, I guess, abusing my privilege a little bit to observe some of the um, things we're buying into. So, at any rate, uh, we have a motion and a second on the floor. Is there any other comment? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries, mayor votes aye. Okay, number 14, lease agreement, Volunteers of America Building Lease. City Administrator's Report, please. Mr. Honor, uh, the city <coughs> out the property located at 223 West Adams uh, to Fremont County thousand and in October 2000 it changed to Bernard Ellis and Associates 
In December of 2001, the lease changed to the Fremont County Alcohol Crisis Center. The lease period has been for two years with an automatic lease that we have on file with the Fremont County Alcohol Crisis Center expired on June 30th, 2012. We currently don't have a lease with the Volunteers of America. Um, the proposed lease that you have attached is exactly the same lease that we had with the Fremont County Alcohol Crisis Center, except for the lease period. Um, VOA is requesting a 20-year lease agreement. The reason for the long-term lease is to give them some security in making improvements to the building. VOA would be would um, would be much more comfortable investing money into capital renovations if they knew that we'd be able to stay long term. Staff has no plans for this building in the future, and VOA is doing a great job for the community. Um, it also shows a commitment on their part to be here for a while instead of just for a couple of years. Recommendation of the city to or from staff to approve the building lease for 20 years. You have other alternatives. You could go to a lower amount, um, but um, I think it's in all of our best interest to allow them to expand and and use that facility to the fullest, um, and I think they'll benefit all of us. Okay, thank you. Uh, the chair would entertain a motion regarding the VOA lease agreement. Your Honor, I would make the motion to approve the lease agreement. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Is there a discussion? Your Honor? Yes, Councilman Gard. How do you lower it lower than what it is? Lower what? The lease agreement. Lower than a dollar a year. Oh I'm yeah. I'm <laughs> no, I'm I'm not I'm not suggesting we change that. It would still be a dollar a year. Okay. And and the only reason that I that's a that's a ridiculously low lease amount which I agree with yeah. but the other thing is termination on item 15 is we can, we can they can terminate we can terminate within 90 days of That's written right. acknowledgement so it is difficult for them to, to look forward to put any um, amenities back in the building that that wouldn't uh, if they were looking at short-term lease and so I think the the length of the lease does a number of things for us and they've done a wonderful job for us um, they're really a, a good service and they're trying hard and hopefully they'll see some opportunities to improve that and to to make that a, a facility that they can continue to use for 20 years plus so i think it's a win-win for everyone thank you your honor thank you uh the chair would entertain a motion regarding the lease agreement i think we already yeah. have that have motion all right um, <clears throat> all those in favor of the uh, motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Mayor votes aye. <clears throat> and I certainly agree with Councilman Gard that uh, expanding that lease out to 20 years will give them the flexibility to, to do the building in, in addition that they've wanted to do for quite a while, but have just been reluctant to, to move ahead. So I think it's a smart move for us to, to make. They are doing a wonderful job down there. Okay, agenda item number 15, bid award, loader and snowblower. Public work director report, please. Thank you, Your Honor. During the preparation of last year's budget, the city council approved the purchase of a new loader with a snowblower attachment for the public works department. Um, last year, as many of you know, the snowblower, which was a 1980 model, broke down, which uh, left us without that snowblower option. Um, Having a loader and snowblower is vital to the city's snow removal practices since we pick up and remove the plowed windrows throughout town. The advertisement period to solicit bids for the purchase of the loader and attachment began September 1st, 2014. Bids were publicly opened October 1st, 2014. Two suppliers submitted bids for the purchase of the loader and snowblower with the following results. Wyoming Machinery uh, submitted two prices. Um, for a 950K Caterpillar wheel loader. Um, each price were different in the sense that one added a tilting chute option, which is uh, part of the snowblower attachment, and one without the tilting chute option. The uh, price for the 950K Caterpillar loader with uh, snowblower without the tilting chute was $363,000. 
excuse me, three hundred sixty-three thousand one hundred ninety-five dollars. With the tilting chute, uh, the bid price came in at three hundred seventy-one thousand seven hundred fifty-one dollars. The second supplier was from Hanan Equipment. They submitted a, a bid for a six hundred forty-four k John Deere uh, wheel loader. They supplied one pricing option, which was with the tilting chute option for the total price of $370,575. The tilting chute option uh, is really ancillary. It's kind of uh, an added benefit. When we bid out the, uh, the loader and the snowblower, it was listed as an option to the required specifications, um, not one of these required specifications. Um, it helps with um, your your snow removal as it stands. It's, it, it, it tilts and allows you to, to change the degree at which you're throwing the snow. Um, nice benefit, but it's not really necessary. Uh, my staff actually looked to see how many municipalities and just in general how many other uh, you know, private companies actually use that. It's a very small percentage. So it's a luxury item. Um, not a necessary item. Pursuant to State of Wyoming Statute 166102 through 166106, preference for the above mentioned bids uh, will be given to bidders with State of Wyoming cer certificates of residency. Wyoming Machinery is a certified resident <coughs> of Wyoming and therefore shall receive a 5% preference um, to Hanan equipment in the award of the bid. Of the bid. As such, uh, staff recommends the City Council to approve the bid of $363,195 from Wyoming Machinery to purchase a 950K Caterpillar, Caterpillar wheel loader with snowblower attachment without the tilting chute option. Uh, as far as budget impacts, um, the purchase of the loader was budgeted between the Sanitation Enterprise and General Funds at a cost split of 75-25 respectively. The purchase of the snowblower attachment was budgeted entirely out of the general fund. Budget funds are sufficient for this purpose, or excuse me, purchase. The budgetary breakdown of this purchase is as follows. For the loader cost share of 75% in the sanitation fund, it comes out to $172,500. At the 25% cost share, $57,500. And the snowblower attachment breaks down to one hundred twenty-three thousand dollars. Okay, thank you. Uh, moving snow is expensive operation, isn't it? Wow. Yeah, it is. Goodness. <clears throat> okay, the chair would entertain a motion regarding the bid awards uh, for the loader and snowblower. Your Honor, I would move to approve the bid award for Wyoming Machinery uh, for the new snowblower and loader combo. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Is there a discussion? Your Honor. No discussion. Is it yellow? Yes, Councilman Guard. <laughs> <laughs> If it was white, you couldn't find it in the snow. <laughs> okay. Got a motion and a second on the floor uh, to approve this uh, bid award. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion <coughs> carries. Mayor votes aye. Okay. Reports and comments. Council committee reports and council member roundtable. Uh, Councilman Smith, would you lead off, please? Thank you, Your Honor. Um, just one item from me tonight, Your Honor, um, and I'll just read a, a written letter. Okay. Um, dated tonight's date, City Council members and citizens of Riverton, Wyoming. It is with very mixed emotion that I announce my resignation from the Riverton City Council. I regret that I will be unable to fulfill the remaining two years of my term. The responsibility that the citizens have given me is an important and weighty duty, and I thank them for the trust they have placed in me. Last Wednesday on October 15, 2014, I was formally offered the job of being pastor at Faith Bible Church in Brick, New Jersey. My family and I will be moving to New Jersey the beginning of November. Therefore, my resignation will be effective October 31, 2014. 
I want to thank the citizens of Riverton who have elected me twice to this office. The last four years have been a blessing to be able to serve in this capacity. Sincerely, Todd Smith. That's all I have, Your Honor. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> Councilman Larson. All I wanted to talk about was uh, Pure Gas Road and how that topping on it makes that road super. And without it, it makes it difficult to get into where I live. I'm happy that you guys fought for 1%. Thank you. Thank you. Councilman Fabian. Um, no committee <coughs> reports, just my best to uh, Councilman Smith as he endeavors in his next job, and uh, it's been nice serving with you. Thanks. Councilman Christensen? Your Honor, no reports this evening, and uh, again, I, uh, we will miss Todd on the council. Uh, sad to see him go, but I'm glad he's got a uh, great opportunity. Okay, Councilman Canan. Uh, nothing, sir, other than uh, the Fremont County Ambulance is having their first task force meeting this coming Thursday. Oh, good. Uh, so hopefully we'll have some information to bring back to the council uh, next week following that. Okay. Councilman Gard. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> I, too, will miss Councilman Smith, and it's been a pleasure to travel with him from many places across the state and enjoy his company. Um, the airport meeting has been moved to the 24th at 8 o'clock in the morning, um, and so that we haven't had that airport meeting. I would like to thank the chief and his officers for the excellent work they're doing on the, the cars that have been reported by uh, one of our citizens, and I really would like to thank her for her efforts. Um, that helps, and we really do need that information passed along to us. and, and uh, and it, it's made a difference. I can see it on the streets. I appreciate the chief grabbing that. He he went right out the Thursday that he got it and verified those and went right, right to work on them. I appreciate that. He also posted on a, the email a really good crime statistic for the city of Riverton. And I, I think that ought to be, uh, we were right at the very top of all the cities in the state of Wyoming, which I think is commendable. And I'd like to, to thank him for that also. Um, I also see on the emails that we managed to sponsor a table for the soup bowl activity, and I appreciate the people that participated in that. And, and that Volunteers of America has made a big difference in our community, and I, anything we can do to sit and support them is a great idea. That's all I have, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you. City Administrator's Report. Your Honor, I, I'll be pretty brief about that. An email that I just sent out to counsel and the staff. Uh, the 2013 crime stats that we report to the to the FBI through the Uniform Crime Reporting, it's broken down into different sections. The Part One Index crimes are there's about eight crimes that are tracked: larceny, burglary, robbery, homicide, aggravated assault, uh, arson, some, uh, rape, uh, fairly serious crimes. They also track clearance rates, and to clear one of those offenses, you have to make an arrest or issue a citation or have somebody held accountable, or sometimes in rare occasions, maybe the offender has died before you can arrest them, and there are some ways to exceptionally clear those. But as those clearance rates go, uh, I think there were about, maybe somebody can remember that email, 13,000, 14,000, maybe uh, part one index crimes in Wyoming. Uh, the state of Wyoming's clearance rate for all agencies was a little over 27 uh, percent. And in Riverton PD, we actually led the state in clearance rate uh, at a little over 38 percent, which is better than 10 percent of the state's average. And of the maybe eight communities, uh, law enforcement agencies that reported more than 500 Part One crimes, uh, we had the top clearance rate in a state for clearing those crimes. So I'm real proud of our troops for the, the work that they do. It it really just goes to show that they're doing a lot more than just documenting crime, that they're actively working to follow up on those crimes and, and find efforts to, to help those victims and to hold folks accountable for their actions. Okay. Thank you, Chief. Well, some rumors that are going on. I just wanted to kind of put 
taking money from and, and, and supplementing to projects in the city or to other operations of the city, and that's just not a true statement. Um, the one set up for the sole purpose revenues come in, they're tracked, and we have expenditures. Those are given to the force committee at their monthly meetings. They're able to look at that and find out um, what is being spent on. Uh, I think the only thing that may cause confusion for some was uh, when we got the over expenditures on South Federal. And when South Federal came in, we had storm water, water and sewer, and they all came in way over budget, and we didn't have the budget numbers. And we went to the force committee and asked for a little bit of money uh, to help with those, not because they were any different than what they should be spent on. They were to be spent on infrastructure um, underneath the road and the road. And so there was $140,000 allocated um, for those projects that came out of the general fund. But other than that, everything has been transparent. Even that process was transparent because we went right in front of the force committee and then uh, went up the chain of command. So I just wanted to uh, let the public know <clears throat> that we are accountable to those 1% funds. We, we hold them uh, sacred in a lot of ways. Aaron and I are pretty uh, on those when we see anything that we feel like is, is maybe going out. Also, uh, our next council meeting, which should be the first council meeting in November, will be changed because of elections. Um, so that will be November 3rd at the same time of 7 instead of November 4th. And so that will be a Monday. We'll be holding our council meeting instead of Tuesday. So that will be... That'll be a benefit. I know the last time we held it on primaries, I know we had a couple media that were saying, why are you holding the meeting on this? We got other things to do. And so um, we felt that was important. Check out the stats. And then just also congratulations to Councilman Smith and his family. We'll miss him. Okay. Thank you. Um, I, too, uh, hate to see uh, Councilman Smith leaving us. We've gone uh, round and round on a lot of different issues, and I've enjoyed the, the um, discussions, and uh, you certainly have brought a lot of um, thoughtful um, efforts to your job as a councilman, and I appreciate it. Um, we're going to miss you. I'm also going to miss you, your snow removal and your, you and your, your sons that help in that area. So, um, But the one thing that we can be sure of in life, it seems like, is change. And so it looks like this opportunity um, is something that you've been praying for and looking forward to. And so we wish you the very best. So. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your time. <clears throat> On the next uh, issue that I'm going to comment, I feel very uncomfortable with. Um, and I um, wish that it was something that um, I didn't have to deal with at this time, but um, this is an issue that I'd hoped to avoid uh, until I was out of office, but here it is. And so uh, it deals with, uh, in the Casper Star this morning, uh, gay marriage is expected to begin today in Wyoming. And then in the Riverton Ranger this evening, the headline is Historic Day in County, First Same-Sex Marriage License Goes to Arapaho Woman. And this is a societal issue that's being thrust uh, upon us or um, we're moving forward with, whichever way you want to look at it. Um, but um, it's an issue that I had hoped to, I, I have a prepared statement, so um, I seem to do better sometimes that way. But uh, I'd hoped to avoid until I was out of office. But uh, these following comments are mine alone and do not represent the city of Riverton or its staff. I suppose that I could go quietly into the night and just be silent, but I feel that each of us have an obligation to speak up and take a stand on important issues. This is especially true for those of us in leadership roles. I feel that words are powerful things, and their use will usually define the action of a person or state. From about the 12th century, according to Wikipedia, the word gay was defined as a happy, free-spirited purpose person. 
Uh, that was pretty much its definition for several hundreds of years and throughout much of classical literature. It was not until about the early part of the, 20th, uh, the 19th century that its meaning changed to mean a homosexual man. In a short time, it has changed to what we now have. The word marriage for over 2,000 years in the Christian culture has been defined as the holy union between one man and one woman. This teaching from our God has been taught throughout the ages as a truth, just as 2 plus 2 equals 4. At the risk of stepping on some politically correct toes, I am going to comment on Governor Meade's lack of appeal of Wyoming's Defense of Marriage Act law. Of course, the potential success of such a fight would approximate zero. That's not the point. This law is the law of Wyoming by our duly elected representatives of this state. I feel it is Governor Meade's duty and responsibility to defend it. If the Supreme Court is going to force this law upon us, let them do it. We have no control over that, but we should not help in this action. The poem by Tennyson called The Charge of the Light Brigade personified a bad decision by a government. One of the lines reads, was there a man dismayed? Not though the soldier knew someone had blundered. It is remembered in history as a valiant fight, not because they lost, which they did, but because they were true to their honor and code of ethics. They did not weigh what the price would be. In their case, it was death for most of them. Helen and I just went to a play this last weekend called 1984 at the Peck Theater at CWC. <clears throat> In that play, Big Brother is out of, uh, to control all the citizens by the thought police. Big Brother tells its citizens how to think, when to think, and what to think. The main example is to break the will of the protagonist, Winston Smith, to the point that he will believe 2 plus 2 equals 5. In the end of the play, he does come to believe 2 plus 2 equals 5 and loves Big Brother for helping him to see the truth of it. In our case, we have 2,000 years of the Christian teachings of our God telling us that marriage is between one man and one woman. Our government, Big Brother, through the Supreme Court is now telling us that is not true. 2 plus 2 is not 4. It's really 5. Marriage is what the government says it is. For me, the government is wrong and has unquestionably blundered. Marriage is the holy sacrament joining one man and one woman together for life. If the government or society at large wants to have a civil union with all of the legal trappings of a marriage, I have no problem with that. Join in any way you desire. But please do not defile marriage and redefine it into something it is not. Two plus two equals four, not five. God help us. That's with that uh, uh, commentary. The chair would entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Been moved and seconded. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Aye.